Good morning, my name is Alberto Velasquez. I'm representing the Czech based company BioBeta. I'm not Czech, I'm from Honduras, which is a, a small country uh, in the center of Latin America, but I live and I work in the Czech Republic. I did my, my studies, my veterinarian studies in Czech Republic, and now I work and I live, as I said, in, in the Czech Republic. Two years ago, I was asked by the person responsible uh, for Bulgaria in BioVeta, Dr. Zaitz, to come with him uh, to Bulgaria. Now is my uh, second time here in Bulgaria, and I would like to thank Dr. Zaitz uh, and LECOM, exclusive representative of BioVeta uh, in Bulgaria, for uh, inviting me to come to Bulgaria and, of course, uh, BBC Forum uh, for make possible this lecture. The main reason why I'm here today is uh, to present you our newest vaccine line, BioCan Novel line of vaccines for companion animals. We will start today's presentations uh, with the development and production of the line. We will continue with the uh, relevant aspects uh, of the vaccines. And to finish, uh, we will talk about the, proper, about the proper use of the vaccine. BioBeta has been producing vaccines since 1999, and you may probably know uh, the vaccines under the trademark BioCan. However, uh, over the years, uh, the epidemiological situation has evolved and it was imperative to BioVeta uh, to quickly react to this change and update the line. As soon as 2014, we were uh, ready to introduce to the market uh, this new line, BioCan Novel line, which is uh, registered in Bulgaria since 2014 too. The most important update to the line was the differentiation from the original strain of parvovirus, the CPV2, to the actual strain, the CPV2B. The second most important update was the inclusion of the uh, Leptospira uh, Bratislava, uh, which is reported, reported to uh, cause uh, diseases in the recent years. Very important uh, during the development of the line uh, was the unification of the antigens for long-lasting immunity. So uh, you can uh, select between uh, years-on-year -year vaccination program or if you prefer, you can use the three years Im immunity that is proved by different uh, testing. BioCan Novel now represents a modern line of vaccines for companion animals, fulfill all the international requirements for the production of uh, uh, veterinarian vaccines for companion animals, and it took BioVeta seven years to develop uh, this uh, combination DHPP uh, plus L4 and rabies, and in total was 12 years to develop the complete line and the investment was about uh, 8 million euros. Manufacturing facilities, uh, this is the largest investment uh, in BioVeta, around 12 million euros. The facility was designed in according, according to the requirements of the U European Union for uh, GMP production. Inside of the the, of this production unit, we have two production lines for bacterial and viral vaccines. In the first floor uh, of this building, there are five bioreactors that are connected by a closed and a sterile system to the uh, filling machines in the ground floor. This is now the largest production unit in BioVeta. Uh, with this facility, uh, we uh, significantly increase uh, our production capacity. Uh, we produce here uh, viral vaccines such as uh, poultry, cattle, swine, and equine vaccines, but we also, uh, we also 
produce uh, cultivation and growth media here. The next building, uh, this is uh, the Labeling Packaging and Expedition Center. It's a completely automated uh, building. Uh, it was also designed for uh, or according the requirement of the European Union for uh, GDP activities. There are three warehouses here, uh, one for uh, the regime up to 25 degrees, second one uh, up to 8 degrees, and the last one for freeze regime for some products that need to be uh, under these conditions. Um, after visual and automate, automatized controls such as volume, uh, appearance, color, physical defects of uh, the vials, the productions go through a closed corridor to the expedition center where we also have uh, a container for uh, products which need a uh, uh, temperature regime. After that, the product is uh, ready to be loaded to the trucks, uh, but uh, if the truck is not ready, it doesn't have the correct temperature, for example, vaccines 8 degrees, the product is uh, not loaded to the, to the containers and the truck has to wait to be under the uh, right temperature conditions. So we guarantee uh, the uh, right management of uh, cold change. Now you can see here uh, one of the bioreactors we have uh, inside our production unit. Uh, all the technology here is from Europe, so we, uh, from countries, uh, for example, uh, Denmark or Sweden. Uh, all the bioreactors here are uh, approved and certified for um, GMP production. Cultivation practices uh, for each uh, strain of antigen is also approved and validated. This is uh, the Solaris uh, bioreactor. It has a working volume of uh, 300 liters and a production capacity of uh, 600 liters of uh, antigens after uh, inactivation. The bioreactor uh, is a dynamic device that uh, simulates the normal condition in the body. Uh, physical and chemical parameters, for example, uh, are uh, regulator, regulated, I'm sorry. Uh, parameters like uh, pH, oxygen, uh, pressure are well regulated. Uh, this allows uh, better cell nutrition, metabolite uh, removal, and uh, promotes uh, better uh, and healthy cell growth uh, for the production of antigens. This is the lyophilizer for GMP freeze dry and production. One cycle uh, lasts 72 hours and produces. Uh, more than 100 vials uh, of uh, vaccines. Thanks to this huge uh, investment, BioVeta ensures enough antigen mass for uh, the production of vaccines and effectively covers uh, the growing demand of, of veterinary vaccines and maintain quality level uh, comparable to international uh, competitors. Our facilities for laboratory testing are also validated for an European uh, GLP production. Uh, this building here is our serum hall. This is a unit certified for uh, C class of uh, production, which uh, means uh, that uh, in this building we can uh, produce solution with a high risk of contamination. Safety and efficacy uh, controls in the laboratories are realized according 
uh, to the European GLP and European uh, Pharmacopoeia. Uh, all uh, the testing, for example, the challenge test testings were realized on specific pathogen-free uh, dogs uh, from accredited uh, laboratories. The clinical trial uh, of this line of vaccines uh, were uh, realize it in countries uh, such as uh, France, Germany, uh, and England. It was a demanding uh, work of many researchers in BioVeta to develop this line. Fortunately, uh, nowadays we produce uh, millions of uh, doses uh, and we export to many countries in five continents of the world. We do not only dispatch to Australia and uh, Arctica. The first vaccine is Biocanovel puppy vaccine. This is a, vac a live vaccine for puppies. It's a vaccine with high titers and low passage. High titers mean that the concentration or uh, the number of uh, antigen particles in the vaccines ensures seroconversion is high. Low passage, uh, when you attenuate uh, a vaccine, you cultivate the virus in tissue cultures as many times as you need. The result is that the virus uh, is close to the original virus. However, uh, the virus is weakened enough to be safe uh, to the patient, but strong enough to uh, induce uh, the production of antibodies against the disease. The combination of high titers and low passage makes these vaccines to overcome uh, the inf influence of uh, maternal uh, antibodies, which is, is the principal reason of uh, vaccine failure in uh, puppies. Safety testing demonstrate that the vaccine can be uh, used as early as, as six weeks of age. Uh, this is a great advantage uh, because uh, allows the puppies an early so socialization uh, and provides better degree of security when uh, the puppies uh, interact with other puppies. Challenge testing uh, Proves the efficacy of Biocan novel puppy against CPV2B, but also against CPV2A and CPV2C. CPV first emerged uh, in the late 70 years uh, as a result of uh, several mutations. Some studies uh, suggest uh, that uh, the virus evolved from uh, feline uh, leukopenia. Other studies point to a wild parvovirus. Whatever was the case, uh, the virus continued uh, to evolve and was completely replaced by uh, the two strains, uh, CPVA and CPV2. Now we know that uh, we have another uh, strain CPV2C and this strain uh, is now co-circulating with uh, CPVA and CPV, uh, CPV2A and CPV2B in uh, the dog population uh, around the world. In Bulgaria, uh, CPV was first reported in 1979 and according to scientific uh, works, uh, the predominant strain is CPV2A. CPV2B seems to be more uh, common in big cities such as Sofia or Koslodui, and CPV2C was first detected in 2010. As you can see in this uh, article, the uh, CPV uh, was isolated from dogs that were vaccinated with the original 
strain of uh, antigen CPV2, but we also have one case where uh, the parvovirus was isolated uh, in a dog that was vaccinated with the mm, actual strain, parvovirus strain CPV2B. All these antigens variant are very uh, similar. The major genetically uh, difference between CPV2 variants is one key amino acid in one specific site of one specific protein. We call this protein VP2 protein. You can see the protein here. This protein is responsible for uh, infecting cells but also works as uh, a receptor for antibodies, uh, for antibody binding in the body. Unfortunately, uh, this protein, in this protein, uh, mutations are very often and very common. We call this process antigenic uh, drift. Antigenic drift a random mutation that cumulate over the time in the virus surface. Uh, this uh, mutation change this site. This site uh, works uh, as uh, a receptor for antibody and the result is that antibody, uh, antibodies don't recognize uh, the virus, so the virus uh, uh, can uh, evade the immune system, system and is easier for the virus, for this mutated virus to spread throughout uh, an immune population. This is the principal mechanism of uh, the virus to evade immune system and uh, one of the main reasons uh, for vaccine failures and also for Mm, viral antigenic uh, diversity. Now uh, I will show you the result of the challenge test for parvovirus. As you can see here, we uh, challenge not only CPV2B but also CPV2A and CPV2C. All this testing were according the requirement of uh, European Pharmacopoeia. European Pharmacopoeia is a binding document for all companies that produce uh, vaccine under these uh, criteria. However, this is the most popular and objective test to challenge a vaccine, but due to welfare concern, soon or later this method will be forbidden because you basically infect uh, a patient and you uh, wait if the patient develops uh, typical signs uh, or if the patient dies from the disease or uh, you have to euthanize uh, the patient. So in the case of parvovirus, uh, we challenge two groups. One group was vaccinated according to the leaflet. The control group uh, was not vaccinated. Subsequently, both groups were inoculated with uh, CPV2A, CPV2B, and CPV2C by the oronasal road. For a period of time, both groups were examined, samples were taken, and uh, looked for typical uh, signs. As you can see in this graph, the control and vaccinated group showed typical clinical signs as leukopenia, vomit, diarrhea, apathy, and lethargy. And the puppies uh, died or uh, were in a proper way, way euthanized. Challenge vaccinated group, as you can see here, remained healthy during all uh, testing. The main reason of a vaccine uh, failure in puppies is uh, maternally derived antibodies. 
no other issues, has the major influence to the immune system to correctly react to the vaccine as the presence of interfering maternally derived antibody. There are three sources of uh, MDA in the organism. 10% of uh, the MDA are transferred during pregnancy via placenta. Uh, most of the antibodies are transferred via colostrum, but uh, we also have passive transfer of uh, CPV MDA through milk. And this lactogenic immunity uh, has been demonstrated to last at least 30 to 60 days uh, after parturition. Although the CPV specific MDA can persist uh, for five, uh, for 15 weeks, I'm sorry. This maternal immunity represents the first uh, defense of puppies uh, against parvovirus. Those vaccination of uh, puppies with interfering MDA uh, titres uh, as low as uh, 20 uh, may result in lack of uh, seroconversion due neutralization vaccines antigen by maternal antibody. Titers higher than 80 are considered protective. However, there is a period known as immunity uh, gap usually lasting three weeks, during which the MDA cannot protect the puppy, but uh, they are still able to block uh, the vaccine. And during this period, uh, the puppies uh, can be infected and develop disease. One of the strategies of uh, BioVeta was to develop a vaccine that uh, will be able uh, to break the interference of MDA. As you can see in this uh, graph, we also determine the antibody titer in presence of MDA in three groups of puppy. One uh, group of puppy, six weeks old puppies were vaccinated. This puppy, uh, these puppies uh, didn't have uh, antibody. The second grab was six weeks old puppies with antibody and properly vaccinated. And the third group was six weeks old uh, puppies with antibody but unvaccinated. As you can see in this uh, graph, the blue line represent uh, the puppies without uh, maternal antibodies. The red line represent the puppies with uh, maternal antibodies and the green line uh, represent unvaccinated puppies with uh, maternal antibodies. In the, in the first group, after the vaccination, we can see that uh, the, the antibody response was uh, strong because uh, this group didn't have uh, uh, maternal antibodies, so the vaccine works very, very well. The second group is the most important uh, group because uh, this is the group with antibody, with uh, maternally uh, derived antibody. You can see in the graph that after vaccination, the antibody response or the level of antibodies went down but the level is still protective. Uh, after the second or uh, after the revaccination, re re you can see the strong response uh, of uh, the antibody in presence of uh, maternally derived antibody. The third group is uh, our control group. It, uh, the puppies weren't vaccinated. Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, the level of uh, maternally derived antibody. They protected uh, for a period of time, the puppy, but as we expected, the level went down and uh, after a period of time, uh, the level wasn't protective uh, for uh, the puppies. 
In the same way, we uh, challenge not only uh, CPV to B, but also CPV to A and CPV to C. As you can see here in the, in the graph, uh, the antibody response against uh, the three strains of uh, parvovirus. However, it's important to keep in mind that uh, our dogs that never respond to vaccination, we call these dogs non-responders. And in normal responders, after vaccination, memory cells synthesizes antibodies uh, for years after vaccination. Nevertheless, and according to this uh, theory, there are genetical reasons that make these uh, dogs to never respond or to never synthesize uh, antibodies after uh, vaccination. Uh, this is uh, the reason why some uh, canine breeds never uh, respond uh, to uh, parvovirus uh, vaccination. This could be the case of uh, breeds like uh, Rottweiler or uh, Dobermans. Let's say you vaccinate 10 dogs per day. In four months, you vaccinated 1,000 dogs. Uh, that means that every three months, one dog per uh, veterinarian in Bulgaria get six from parvovirus regardless uh, proper vaccination. So much uh, for parvovirus. Now we will talk about uh, distemper. Uh, we uh, did the same uh, laboratory testing for distemper. Distemper antigen was also uh, tested in the same way as uh, parvovirus. Uh, we tested uh, distemper in, in accordance uh, to the European pharmacopoeia, but in the classical line uh, of uh, vaccines, the Biocan line, we also tested uh, this strain uh, according uh, to the requirements of uh, the US because uh, we have registered the classical line in the US. So uh, we had to challenge uh, this uh, uh, line according to the requirements of uh, the US. The difference between the challenge in, uh, according to the European pharmacopoeia and uh, the challenge according uh, the US is in the road of uh, inoculation. According to the European pharmacopoeia, uh, we had to inoculate it by intravenous and according to the US uh, requirement has to be uh, by the intracerebral uh, inoculation. After the challenge testing, we also uh, realized the antibody response again uh, distemper, as you can see uh, in this graph. What are you seeing here is basically uh, a similar result as uh, in parvovirus. We uh, tested uh, three groups of uh, puppies. The first uh, was uh, a vaccinated uh, group with, uh, with, without uh, maternally derived antibodies. The second uh, group was uh, puppies with uh, maternally derived antibodies. And the third group was the control group. It was a, uh, was, uh, a group without vaccination, but with uh, maternally derived antibodies. This line here represents the first group, the group without maternally derived antibody. The response is as we as expected. If you vaccinate a puppy without maternally derived antibody, so the response is uh, uh, very quick and strong. So you can see here uh, that the level of uh, antibody after vaccination went high. The second line represent uh, vaccinated puppies with 
maternally derived antibodies, you can see here that after uh, vaccination, the level of antibodies uh, went high. Uh, after a period of time, uh, the level uh, didn't grow. Uh, and um, after uh, revaccination, uh, the response uh, was very, very strong. In uh, the control group, the puppies uh, with maternally derived antibody but unvaccinated, as you can see, the maternally derived antibody uh, went uh, down and disappeared after a period of time. So this uh, demonstrate that uh, Biocan novel puppy uh, responds very well uh, even in the presence of uh, high levels of uh, maternally derived antibodies. So in conclusion, uh, we can say that the results of all uh, the testings uh, show that uh, the Biocan novel puppy prevents uh, the clinical signs of uh, uh, parvovirus and distemper is 100% effective vaccine in uh, puppies with high levels of uh, anti uh, maternally derived antibodies and is uh, uh, efficacy for vaccination of puppy. However, please remember that maternally derived antibodies is the main reason for vaccine failure. Antigenic drift uh, is uh, the principal mechanism of virus uh, for evade immune system and non-responders are dogs that uh, for certain genetical reasons never uh, respond to parvo uh, vaccination. The next vaccine is uh, Biocan Novel DHPPIL4. This is a vaccine with five live antigens and four serovars of Leptospira. This is a vaccine indicated for uh, revaccination after primo vaccination. However, testing uh, show that uh, it's safe to be used in puppies from the age of six weeks. So uh, many countries use these vaccines for primo vaccination of puppies and this is correct because this vaccine is safe for the use uh, for use in dogs uh, from six weeks of age. Biocan novel DHPPIL4 has uh, other vaccines against uh, parvovirus has this, the same strain as uh, Biocan novel puppy the uh, parvo strain CPV to B. It has uh, four important uh, serovars of uh, Leptospira, Leptospira Bratislava included, and uh, the uh, strain uh, of adenovirus type 2 that provides uh, cross protection against uh, adenovirus 1. The important features of uh, CAV2 is its uh, antigenic relatedness to CAV1. Is CAV2 is much safer for using in vaccines and also provides protective immunity against CAV1, as you can see in this uh, graph. We measured uh, the antibody response against uh, CAV2, uh, but as you can see here, uh, the vaccine also uh, provides protection against CAV1. CAV1 is an all strain that is not recommended uh, for use in vaccine because uh, it's uh, not much safer than uh, CAV2 and CAV2 also provides uh, protection against CAV1. So uh, the recommendation uh, for uh, vaccines against uh, against adenovirus is to use uh, C, uh, the strain CAV2 in vaccines because it's much safer. All the Leptospira components in the vaccines were also uh, challenge for clinical symptoms, uh, virus shedding, and uh, protection. 
and here we can see the result of the challenge test of uh, leptospirus you can see uh, that uh, vaccinated uh, uh, puppies or patients uh, didn't uh, show clinical symptoms of leptospirosis and unvaccinated patient uh, show with uh, clinical symptoms and they see the uh, uh, leptospira in urine the next vaccine this will be uh, the last vaccine in our portfolio uh, the biocan novel uh, r is an inactivated uh, vaccine that contain more than two international units the zero conversion of this vaccine is uh, more than one international unit uh, per milliliter and this is a vaccine that uh, fulfill all the requirements uh, of international and european organization the recommendation for uh, a vaccine against rabies is uh, an inactivated strain uh, with a content of uh, one international unit and a zero conversion of 0.5 uh, international unit per milliliters and the strain has to be authorized uh, by international uh, organization Biocan Novel R uh, is a vaccine indicated for uh, healthy dogs from 12 weeks of age however if you need to vaccinate younger uh, dogs you can do it uh, from uh, six weeks of age in this case you need to revaccinate uh, the patient at least uh, three weeks after the first vaccination but not uh, earlier than 12 weeks uh, of age it is important to know that uh, recent scientific uh, publications show that approximately 10 percent of uh, dogs don't prove zero conversion uh, after vaccination apparently not all dogs respond uh, equally to vaccination and by contrast some animals uh, appears to over respond to vaccination against rabies data also suggests that uh, small dogs respond uh, or elicit a higher level of antibody than uh, largest uh, breeds another observation is that uh, young animal less than one year of uh, age and all dogs generate a lower uh, antibody response to rabies vaccination than adults the reason for this vaccine failure are not well understood however seems to be that are some genetical factors that influence the immune response against rabies and also seems to be that these uh, genetical uh, factors are related with uh, parvovirus response because uh, some scanning breeds that are not good responders to uh, parvovirus uh, also don't respond to uh, rabies this is the case of uh, rottweilers uh, and uh, uh, dobermans in the other hand uh, there are breeds that uh, respond uh, very well to uh, rabies uh, vaccination this is the this is the case of uh, uh, pointers or whippet that uh, are considered to be uh, well responders after uh, rabies uh, vaccination indisputably uh, the response to antigen is uh, under a very complex uh, genetic control and this control will affect uh, uh, other vaccines not only rabies vaccines or parvovirus uh, vaccines
In Latin America, it's common that vaccinated dogs uh, died of natural rabies, probably uh, from a wildlife vector. Uh, the vector of the rabies in Latin America is uh, most commonly a bat, but also racon or skunk. In Europe, uh, the vector is uh, the red fox. However, thanks to uh, Fnukovo strain, uh, many countries that implement control programs against rabies uh, manage to eradicate uh, rabies in their country. This is uh, the case of Czech Republic. In 2004, Czech Republic was uh, considered a country uh, free of uh, rabies. We have two vaccines with the strain of Nukovo for the control of uh, rabies. We produce more than 400 million doses uh, of uh, oral vaccines against rabies and we export these vaccines more than 20 countries uh, in the world. We produce more than 10 million doses for parenteral use of uh, vaccines against rabies only for uh, Europe. This is our last slide on vaccines and I would like to talk about uh, the potency of the vaccine with this slide. The number you can see here uh, is the titer of the vaccine. Uh, this is uh, basically the potency uh, of the vaccine. And this unit here is the tissue culture infective, infective doses. This is the unit to represent uh, the titer of the vaccine. Pharmaceutical companies uh, use uh, uh, this number or this unit to uh, represent uh, the effectiveness of uh, the vaccines and veterinarians doctors tend to take this number to compare vaccines uh, between each other. Uh, this is uh, not the right way to compare vaccines because uh, this number here uh, it depends on many 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 factors for example uh, the cell, the antigen you use, uh, the method to produce the vaccines, the tissue culture cells that you use, the age of the cells mm, that you use, among others. So uh, it's uh, important. Uh, what is really important is to take this number and to see the results of uh, all the testing and uh, of course to see if this uh, uh, number is able uh, or if the vaccine is able to induce uh, a protection. So this is the last uh, part of the presentation. We will talk about uh, the vaccination issues. Uh, we will uh, start with uh, the vaccination recommendation. Vaccination recommendation is to start between six and eight weeks of age and not to finish the vaccination series before 16 weeks of age because uh, the interference of uh, maternally derived antibodies. It is also recommended to revaccinate between 6 and 12 months of age in order to be sure that the puppy gets at least one vaccine without the interference of maternally derived antibodies. Even if you follow the recommendation for uh, vaccination, please remember that uh, it doesn't exist uh, a 100% effective vaccine and without the risk of uh, adverse reactions. In some countries, uh, for example, that have uh, big problems with uh, parvovirus, uh, use this vaccination scheme. But I repeat, uh, it is important just to follow uh, the recommendation of the international uh, organization and, of course, the leaflet of the vaccine uh, that you apply. The last topic 
uh, are the legal requirements for traveling uh, in the Union, Europe Union. Uh, traveling with companion animals is regulated uh, by uh, the legislative of the European Union, uh, the local laws of the countries and of course international organizations but you don't have uh, to know the full text uh, of all these laws but it's important to know just uh, the most important requirements for traveling uh, in the European Union. Here you have uh, briefly described what do you need if you want to travel with uh, uh, your uh, pet within the European Union or outside the European Union. First, identification by microchipping. This applies only to uh, the European Union. And remember that uh, before the vaccination against rabies, uh, the animal has to be uh, identified with uh, microchipping. Second requirement, uh, passport. This applies only to European Union. Uh, in some countries uh, that they don't have uh, a pet passport, uh, it is important to have uh, an animal uh, health certificate issued by uh, local authorities in the country. The third uh, requirement is uh, anti-rabies vaccination. Uh, the vaccination has to be with an authorized uh, vaccine, for example, Biocan Novel R, Biocan Novel DHPPI L4R is an authorized uh, vaccine for uh, against rabies. The content of the vaccine has to uh, be at least uh, one unit. Uh, Biocan Novel R contains uh, two international units and for countries outside the European Union or in the European Union, uh, the vaccine uh, has to be registered or has to be approved by uh, the local authorities. Some countries in Europe, for example, Ireland, Malta, Finland, Norway and the UK uh, requires a specific uh, treatment against uh, the warming. Uh, the medicament has to contain prasiquantel and it has to be uh, confirmed in uh, the pet passport. The last requirement doesn't apply to Europe, but uh, most of the countries outside the European Union uh, requires uh, a an, uh, rabies antibody titration test uh, in order to entry with your pet to the countries. And the minimum level of uh, uh, of the protective uh, antibody has to be 0.5 uh, international units uh, per uh, milliliter. This is the last slide. I would like to thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Saitz and once again, thanks VVC Forum for make possible this presentation. Thank you very much.